And welcome to the first ever and possibly last ever episode of Reunited Apart, a show that brings back together some of our favorite casts and creative teams from some of our favorite movies of all time to reunite all while socially distancing, either for health concerns or because they simply don't want to be near each other. I'm Josh Gett. As many of us watching this wish we could see each other right now, it is my sincerest hope that catching up with some old friends of all of us will bring much needed joy to each and every single one of you. Before I introduce today's very special guest, I just wanna take a brief moment to kindly ask each and every single one of you watching at home to please donate below to today's very special foundation, the Center for Disaster Philanthropy. Our hope is that every episode of Reunited Apart will focus on a charity established to help those in most desperate need during these incredibly difficult times. The Center for Disaster Philanthropy is allocating all of its money to people who are most vulnerable right now. So please, even if it's spare change, do me a favor and donate. A lot of people are depending on it. In 1985, a movie was released into what at the time were called movie theaters. A movie theater was a place that people would go and sit within six feet of each other and share popcorn and a box of candy and occasionally make out from what I understand. Sounds crazy. In 1985, a movie was released that would forever change the course of my life. I was about four years old the first time I ever met Mouth, Brand, Mikey, Sloth, Chunk, Data, Andy, Steph, and the entire cast of the Goonies. I remember sitting in a dark theater next to two people with heavy hair metal mullets and neon pink muscle tanks and going on an adventure to the coastline of Oregon where a group of would-be explorers banded together in search of a pirate ship carrying enough treasure to save their families from having to move out of their homes. Most importantly, on that fateful day, I learned four words that would forever change the course of my young life. Goonies, never say die. Today, I'm going on my own treasure hunt to reunite the cast of the godfather of its generation, the Goonies. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean, Aston, is hey, that you? Josh, yeah. Hey, it's yeah. me, Josh Gad. Yeah, no, I know. Thank, thank you for returning my 12th call. Yeah, got a little overwhelming not to just call you back. So, yeah. hey there, how can I help you out, big man? Oh, no, it's nothing big. It's a, it's a, it's a small uh, favor. Was wondering if uh, you could help me sh track down your entire cast from your movie, The the Goonies. Could you do that? Well, I, I could do it. There's plenty of ways. Great. Yeah, but you know, it kind of takes something to get something. Sean, please don't. Do it. Come on. Do it. Come on. Do it. Uh, all right, Sean. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do the truffle shuffle. No, 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 no. That is not what I meant. Oh, what I was driving funny. at was, you know, a little Olaf. Can you do a little Olaf? Come on, please. Just a little bit. My wife and kids, like a little message. They would love it. We love that movie so much. Please. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Hey, that's me. I'm Olaf. I like warm hugs. That's it? You can do better than that. Come on, you're Olaf. Hey! Hi, Sean's family. I'm Olaf. Would you or your family like to see me do the truffle shuffle? No. Still no? No. But it was great, Olaf. Thank you. You want to make the call now? You want me to round them up? Yes. Yes. Yes! All right, how do we do this? Do you guys like Zoom? Or do you, do you send out like a, like a Goonies bat signal up to the sky? Sky? Don't you realize? The next time you see Sky, it'll be in another town. The next time you take a test, it'll be in some other school. Our parents, 
They want the best of stuff for us. But right now, they got to do what's right for them because it's their time. Their time up there. Down here, it's our time. It's our time down here. That's all over the minute we ride up Troy's bucket. Sean Astin, I love you. Please welcome the cast of The Goonies. Josh, T, Martha, Carrie, Corey, Sean, Jeff. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Look at Guys, you. the cast of the Goonies! <laughs> I cannot believe I have you all in one, but also so many places. I, if I were to tell my younger self that this was happening, he'd probably have like a 1980s Hodor fit. I, first of all, I'd love each of you to quickly fill us in on what you've been up to in and out of quarantine. We've been doing nothing what do you mean what have we been doing <laughs> things have been good though man it's a it's a great time to kind of reassess what starts to surface is what's important and what's not so important and it's instigating a lot of things like this man which is amazing this would never happen and i'm so happy to see everybody i can't even tell you i, I was know, shaking so before we started <laughs> martha what are you up to right now you're looking beautiful Oh, you're very kind, dear. I did manage to shower today. That was a major accomplishment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Carrie, where are we finding you right now? You you look like a first yeah. lady. I'm in my home, the kids and the dog and my husband, and we've been eating a lot. <laughs> uh, Jeff, which Game of Thrones set are you currently <laughs> occupying? Uh, well, this is uh, my friend Tony Montana. Yeah. This is his throne, <laughs> and he let me wear it. Thank you, Josh, for setting this up. This is amazing. It's great to see everybody. It's an important cause. I, I reached the pinnacle of entertainment uh, by portraying <laughs> the role of Chunk. And I, there was nowhere to go but down. So I retired on top, like Babe Ruth before me. Uh, I, uh, I went to law school. And I'm currently an entertainment lawyer. The one person who's no longer an actor looks most like an actor right now. <laughs> Keep, are you still acting? Oh my God, it's been so exciting for the last few months. I decided to get back into acting because of uh, movies like Crazy Rich Asians has really opened up a lot of opportunities for actors in the Asian community. Sean, what have you been up to? Uh, my acting, my, my daughter's high school senior film class just did a production and I played the principal. I think there was heart, there was a lot of heart in that performance. Mostly I've just been coming to terms with being, you know, non-essential, which I'm trying to do with precision. Corey, how are you holding up? I'm doing well. I'm actually stuck outside of the country. So I'm the only one I believe who's quarantining very far, very far <laughs> from all of you because I had premiered my film, uh, My Truth, the documentary, which is the expose that I spent the last three years working on, and it's a really important film. This is incredible seeing all of you guys together. I don't want this to be like a DVD commentary. We've seen that. I want to keep this fun and loose, give you guys a chance to ask questions to each other. So let's start with Sean. All right, so my question is for, uh, is for Josh, my brother. In the film, we tortured you. We, we, we tied you up in 1980s workout equipment. So my question is, have you ever considered at this point, snapping me out. So this is like a Goonies Avengers reference. <laughs> uh, no, but I have thought about tying you up, but that's really weird, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, on average, how many times a week does someone come up to you and scream, Andy, you Goonie! <laughs> <laughs> that has never, never happened. happened. Ever in my life. No. Once. Really? That shocks me. I have a question for you, Key. Oh, you cool. Okay. okay. What was more fun, going down the Goonies slide or dropping out of an airplane on an inflatable raft with Indiana Jones? You know, I would really love to discuss the differences in playing Data in Goonies versus short round in Indiana Jones, but. Uh, unfortunately, I got to jump on an Indiana Jones Zoom thing with Harrison Ford. <laughs> so I gotta go. Uh, if I'm being honest, I feel extremely fortunate to be a part of these two amazing movies. I had the best of time making them. And the way I see it is, 
If I didn't survive jumping out of a plane with Indiana Jones, I would have never been able to go on a water slide with my fellow Goonies. Yeah. Here's my question for you. Yes. How is it that Chunk is more fit than any of us now? <laughs> well, thank, thank you, Key. My brother, Key, that's very kind. Um, yes, it is true. I did go from chunk to the hunk that you now see in front of you. To my in my mind. humble opinion, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Fratelli brothers are some of the most iconic villains ever. Were you scared of them? Were you guys scared of them as kids? Come on, he's eating my pepperoni. Why pepperoni? Huh? Robbie Davi, he was a scary man. Especially when he sang opera. Please welcome the Fratelli brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, Joey Pants. Yeah! Yay. Hi, everybody. Robert Dovey. Look at you, how beautiful you all are. Robert, you have an age today. What are you doing? Are you drinking blood? No. <laughs> no, I just drink a lot of, uh, you know, wheatgrass juice and stuff. Two of the people who sadly can't be with us are John Matuszak and Ann Ramsey. What were they like to work with? John was a great guy. I used to tease him because we all used to be able to eat, and he wasn't able to eat with the prosthesis. Chocolate. He used to eat his lunch through a straw, right? They used to give him smoothies. Yes, they had the straw, but you know, we would, Joey and I would eat hamburgers or pizza, and go, John, would you like a bite? What was Ann like to work with as your mom? She's wonderful. I remember Dobby and I in the makeup trailer with Annie in the morning, and we would be rattling. We would just be yelling at each other first thing in the morning. And finally, she started screaming, Stop it! Stop it! I can't stand it anymore! <laughs> <laughs> Show them the tattoo. Oh, I have a tattoo. Mom was in the Navy. Our perception of you guys on set was total rivalry. The exact same rivalry that you had in the movie. So was that right. rivalry yeah. real? 100%. I can't stomach the guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd love to bring out the writer of The Goonies, uh, a man who, in addition to writing your film, wrote Gremlins and would go on to direct the Home Alone films, Mrs. Doubtfire, and of course, Harry Potter. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Chris Columbus. Woo! I gotta ask you a question I've been meaning to ask you for a long time. How exactly does one go about writing a movie about a bunch of offbeat kids who meet a deformed man in the basement of a criminal syndicate, <laughs> which also happens to sit upon a cave housing a trapped pirate ship with enough treasure to save multiple families from foreclosure in the most exciting action adventure setting of them all, Oregon. I'd never been to Oregon, first of all. So I, I didn't know, I was originally gonna set the film in Ohio, which is where I grew up. So I grew up in this, you know, sort of factory town where there was nothing to do. It was complete disaster. And all I wanted to do was get out of it. Is any of it based on your life? Did you go treasure hunting as a kid? Oh, God, no. There was no treasure in Youngstown, Ohio. Uh, but what we used to do as kids in that town during the summer was go into the abandoned coal mines, and that's where we searched for treasure. Uh, all right, now, guys, I have a big favor to ask on behalf of everybody at home, and mainly me. I think we're all wondering what it would be like to see you guys reprise these roles from the Goonies 34 years later. So we've collected some of our favorite lines for each of you. All we need is uh, a director. So I want to bring in one Richard Donner who's celebrating his 90th birthday. God bless you. Wow. I don't think he can see us. Can he hear us? Now, clearly, uh, Richard has never shot a film on Zoom before, uh, only 65 millimeter, apparently. So we're going to give Richard a second to figure out uh, how to see and hear us, and then we'll, we'll get him back into this interview. OK, here we go. Hi. Data, where are you going? I'm setting booty traps. <laughs> you mean booby traps? That's what I said. I'm setting booby traps. No, no, shh. God, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> It sounded exactly like when you did it. I'm having flashbacks. John and Carrie, you guys still got it? Okay. Um, I can't tell if it's an A sharp or if it's a B flat. <laughs> if you hit the wrong note, we'll all be flat. Yes! <laughs> yes! 
Jeff, Josh, Sean, Corey, bring it to us. Bring it home for us. It's only because I love you, Josh, and this is a very important charity. For the scene, I'm supposed to have a statue of David. I do not have that, but I do have a chunk, a chunk plushie. Oh, there's a statue of David. Carrie's got the statue. Is it turned around? Is the yeah. you know, groin turned around? I know it, it is. Yeah. I mean, don't put it too close. Not too close. And action. Hey, I bet you thought I was going to drop it, huh? I know you'd expect that a good old chunk. You idiot. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, it's not broken. It's perfect, huh? The statue's penis has broken off. You think you're all going to notice? What? Oh, my God. <laughs> you think you're all going to notice? Notice that you guys did it. Well, I wonder if she, she'll notice. That's what I said. Well, of course she'll notice. She notices everything. <laughs> so include the statue's penis on upside down. How's this? Oh, you idiot. You put it on upside down. If God made it that way, you'd all be pissing in your faces. Scene four, Martha, Key, Sean, and Corey. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop. You can't do this. Why? Why? Because these are somebody else's wishes. They're somebody else's dream. Yeah, but you know what? This one, this one right here, this was my wish, my dream, and it didn't come true. So I'm taking it back. I'm taking them all back. Oh, yeah. Carrie and Martha, you want to give us one of my favorite pieces of dialogue in cinema history? <laughs> Does Brand wear braces? Next time, kiss with your eyes open. It's a whole different experience. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the Fratelli brothers. Guys, wait, hold on. I need a moment. Because this is chunk related, I do have a Hawaiian shirt. So I yes. can get into the mood in true, in true chunk fashion. Okay. Kid, tell us everything. <laughs> everything? Everything. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'll talk, I'll talk. In third grade, I cheated on my history exam. In fourth grade, I stole my Uncle Max's toupee and I glued it on my face to play Moses in my Hebrew school play. In fifth grade, I knocked my sister Edie down the stairs and I blamed it on the dog. <laughs> and when my mom sent me to summer camp for fat kids and they served lunch, I pigged out, they kicked me out. <laughs> but, but the worst thing I ever done, I, I mixed up a pot, a fake puke at home, and I went to the movie theater <laughs> and I hid the puke in my jacket. I climbed up to the balcony and <laughs> this was terrible. I made a noise like this. <laughs> Everybody with me. <laughs> and then I dumped it on the side and all the people in the audience. And then this was <laughs> horrible. All the people started getting sick and throwing up all over each other. I never felt so bad in my entire life. <laughs> Hey, Ma, Ma, I'm beginning to like this kid. <laughs> Chris Columbus, what did you think? I actually think you guys may be better now. There's one other person I should ask. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, one of my favorite directors of all time, the legend himself, Steven Spielberg. Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys! Hey. We're just making an ordinary adventure here ordinary fantasy nothing extraordinary happens in this picture at all steven do you have any cool. memory or memories that stand out from visiting the set and from being around these guys my best memory i have to say didn't happen during the shooting of the movie it happened after the movie was over everyone we cast was high energy and after a while it kind of started working on dick sort of tear him apart at a piece at a time and so by the end of the movie in the last two weeks richard just kept saying oh my god i got two weeks to go and i can't wait to finish and i'm going to go to my house in hawaii and i'm going to get away from all of this noise and it's extraordinary and i love him to pieces but i can't stand it anymore so right after that we wrapped the film i took the whole cast and put him on American Airlines and sent him to Donner's house in Hawaii. <laughs> so before Dick ever landed, they all showed up in his living room and then they can tell you the story from there when Dick opened the door and saw all the Goonies in his living room <laughs> screaming and waving.
we all opened up our, our, our suitcases and we threw our clothes everywhere and we're all lounging either outside in his hammock or in his bed. Right. I think somebody ended up in his bed. He dropped to his knees. He turned white as a sheet. <laughs> thought we'd given him a coronary. Please welcome with me the singer of one of the greatest movie themes of all time, Cindy Lauper. Hey! You somehow haven't aged since the making of The Goonies. A lot of facial cream. For me, The Goonies was kind of a, our gang kind of thing. We are good enough. It was one of those incredible underdog movies that you, you always rooted for the underdog, and it was funny. Please join me in celebrating Dick Donner's equipment Working! Are you a dick? We got dick. audio from Dick. Dick Donna. Happy birthday, Dick. Is today Sorry. your 90th birthday? My 90th? Holy shit. <laughs> 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 Nobody dick. has told me which one it is. Dick, I gotta I gotta ask, I gotta ask you, Chris and Steven, while you're here. What is it gonna take for you guys to make a Goonie sequel? They can't even spell that. <laughs> Steven can answer that better than anybody. Chris and Chris and Dick and I and Lauren have had a lot of conversations about it, and every couple of years we come up with an idea, but then it doesn't hold water. I mean, what, the problem is the bar that all of you raised on this genre. I don't think we've really successfully been able to find an idea that is better than the Goonies that we all made in the '80s. So until we do. Uh, people are just going to have to look at this a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to find seven miserable kids like this again that are all new and fresh? It is the most difficult thing I ever thought I was going to get into. I never anticipated what it was going to be like. Because individually, they're wonderful. They're nuts. They're, uh, they're the warmest, craziest little things that have come into my life. But in a composite form, you get them all together, and it's mind-blowing. Very early on when we were doing wardrobe, and Dick was talking about the film, and he said, this will be the, the Wizard of Oz of this time period. And, uh. and you said it back then, in the, in the mid-80s, when we first started, we hadn't even finished filming. How do I get you on this thing? How do I? <laughs> I got nine people, but I don't have Dick, you. Dick, scroll. Dick, scroll to the right. Oh, I got more people. Hey. hey. Go. Oh, this is very exciting. <laughs> what is it about the Goonies that stands the test of time. There is something about this movie that's just so joyful. What, what do you attribute that to, Dick? What can I tell you? I mean, you know, if I could give you an answer to that, I'd be uh. as rich as Steven. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have you guys all do your best sloth impressions. Cause I feel like I have a very good, my favorite sloth moment ever is actually a random one when he's pulling the pipe down and he just literally is holding it and he goes, oh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my favorite sloth moment is where he says, Ruth, 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 baby, Ruth. Baby. <laughs> the other thing, Dick, I have to ask you while I've got you. According to IMDb, there's 103 bloopers in the movie. Who Are you responsible for that? Who do you blame for that? Because now's the time where you can blame anyone. Listen, with all these seven incredible human beings talking at once, hogging the camera, loving, crying, hating, smiling. We're lucky it's not a thousand and three. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, did you actually speak Spanish or Dick and, and Chris and Steven just fed you those lines? Nunca subo arriba es de lleno de los instrumentos de tortura de sexual del señor Walsh. Hey! <laughs> Once story. you learn it, it never goes away, baby. Steven, do you remember when Harrison came to the set? Harrison Ford visited the set of the Goonies. Everybody visited. Clint Eastwood visited. Clint came on the set and he watched for about 15 minutes and came over to me and he said, did you ever think about going back to acting? <laughs> <laughs> Today has brought me more joy than I think any day of my life. Do not tell my family this. I would love uh, for all of us to just take a second and give a shout out to all of the amazing first responders, all of the incredible nurses, doctors, everybody who's fighting right now 
uh, to bring relief to everybody suffering from COVID-19. Uh, if, if you guys enjoyed today as much as I did, please make sure to donate below. Cindy Lopper, would you lead us out with a with an encore performance of Good Enough? Are you it's good enough? Good enough. 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 To all the doctors, nurses, our mail carriers, all the truck drivers, the police, the maintenance workers, the doctors and nurses out there fighting the good fight, the packages and the food and, and, and the EMTs. I just want to say that we see you, we appreciate you, and we thank you so much. The Goonies saved the world in the movies, but you guys are the true heroes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless y'all. Goodies, Goodies never, never say die. I'm gonna go right into the other room right now and I'm gonna watch Goodies.